Hello and welcome to chapter 21 on our blueprint book. Today we're going to talk about stud welds. So um, stud welds are something a lot of welders getting into the business don't think about, but they are absolutely everywhere. Um, the purpose for most stud welds is to um, adhere a steel piece into concrete and the studs give the concrete something to hold on to. So a real common use for these is you see a loading dock. So you've got a a big concrete structure, trucks back in, forklift drive on it. Most most all of them have a piece of angle iron flush set into the concrete at this corner. It's not proud like this. It'll actually be set in like that, and that's to protect the edge of this concrete from chipping and, and just getting beat up. Well, how does this angle get held in there? and gets held in with stud welds. So in the back corner of this angle, there are going to be a bunch of studs welded in. So when they set this set this thing into concrete, the concrete will wrap around these studs and a stud is just kind of a T-shaped object like that. It's got a, a little point on the end of it. Um, they come in different diameters, different lengths. They're circular. Um, they're everywhere. And they come in all different sizes, all different, they're just everywhere. So um, stud welding is something you may do as a welder. A lot of times it won't be with the with the stud guns. It will be by hand. Um, those are really the two ways you can do stud welding, either with a normal welding process. In essence, you're going to be putting a fillet weld around that on a piece of plate. Or you can do it with a stud gun. I'll talk about stud guns in a little bit. So studs are actually, they're real important. Um, the Structural Welding Code AWS D11 actually has its own chapter in it dedicated just to stud welds. It's Clause 7. Um, and that should tell you how important they are. In an earthquake, studs take a huge amount of force because concrete is a very rigid form. The steel is not. And the interface takes a lot of stress. Um, the steel moving and flexing, the concrete tying not to it's really important those studs don't break off because if, let's say instead of a loading dock, let's say this was an overhead structure, um, in an earthquake, if these shut studs shear off, this steel piece is going to fall right out of that concrete and it could fall onto people. So studs are real important, especially in seismic applications. Um, the, the earthquakes in California, they've, they've done a lot of research and that's where most of this stuff comes from is, is seismic events and it's real important. So having said that, um, let's talk about some of the weld symbols. So, symbols for a stud weld, first off, they are always put on the arrow side. There, there is no other side symbology for a stud weld. And it'll be that guy with an X through it. That's a stud weld. So, what other information can we con convey on a, on a stud welding symbol? Well, we can talk about the, the, the size of the stud, in this case, not diameter, or not weld size, but actually stud diameter. So that's going to be a half an inch stud. So one half inch diameter stud. Um, we can also um, talk about how many we're going to put in. That means I'm going to put 10 studs in. The number is always in parentheses. Size always goes to the left. Um, quantity is going to be in parentheses here. We can also talk about pitch. And that is spacing. So that means I'm going to have um, every four inches. I'm going to put a stud. That's only if they're in a straight line. If they're linear, we can do this. I'm going to get, I got 10 studs on four inch centers, no problem. If they're not linear, if they're not in a straight line, each stud location has to be called out on the drawing. Otherwise, we don't know where to put them. Um, let's talk about the actual stud welding, talk about stud guns. So a stud gun is a special um, welding gun that is specifically designed to to weld studs, like the name is what it does, like just like NAC. So how stud welding works is, we'll have our base plate down here. 
So you'll have your stud. And then there's also what's called a ferrule, and it's a ceramic ferrule. And what it's there for is to protect the stud. And it's a circular thing. You slide it on the stud, then you put the stud down. Um, and then after you're done, you just break the ferrule off with a hammer. So let me erase my header up here. So what happens is the stud gun holds on to the stud, and it's got a bunch of moving parts. But it grabs the stud up here, connects here, and provides provides current. These are there to lift the stud up. And what happens is you pull the trigger on a stud gun. It lifts the stud up, puts a huge amount of current through the stud. So it lifts it up. So you've got your ferrule. Puts a huge amount of arc down here. And then the last step is it plunges the stud down. Melts this little tip off. Plunges the worst drawing in the history of ever. Plunges the stud down and you end up with a pretty much full penetration weld. Complete fusion of stud to base plate. Um, how to inspect these is when we're done. Around the stud will be a flash of all the molten stuff that got squeezed out when it smushed it together. That flash will be 360 degrees around the stud. Um, the, the stud guns, you can adjust the amperage you're running, and it's going to be a lot of amperage because you think about the, the thickness of that electrode. The stud is actually becoming the welding electrode. The thickness is real big, so it'll be a lot of amperage, sometimes 1,000, 1,200 amps. Um, so you can adjust the amperage, you can adjust how much time that stud is in the air, so how long the arc holds before it plunges back down. The bigger the stud, the thicker the base, the base plate, the longer that dwell time is going to have to be to pre everything, and then um, it'll plunge in and make the weld. Uh, we do need to think about preheating as well. If we're welding studs down to any kind of thick material, or the studs are extremely thick, we're going to have to preheat everything as well just like it was structural. So if we're not going to use a stud gun, we can use G GMAW spray, we can use flux core, we can use stick. Um, but the code also has very specific requirements about minimum weld size applied to the, the size of the stud and also with stick welding minimum electrode size. You actually have to, you really have to look at the code closely when you're dealing with studs because there's a lot to it. Um, so field inspection. Um, at the start of every shift, if you're stud welding, at the start of every shift, you have to test the first two stud welds you make. And how you do that is you get the machine set up the way you want it. You make your two welds. You visually examine them for 360 degree flash all the way around them. And then you, you bend them over at a 30 degree angle. So you're going to take these and bend them over at a 30 degree angle. Terrible drawing. And if you can bend them to 30 degrees, and then you can either do it by beating them over with a hammer or getting a cheater bar and pulling on them. You can bend them over 30 degrees and the welds um, show no sign of, of lack of fusion or cracking here or here. Everything looks fine. You actually don't even have to fix them. You can leave them bent and continue on, but you have to do that at the beginning of every shift. Um, one last thing about studs is we've talked about them completely in the structural sense, but that's not all there is to all there is to it anymore. There are a ton of really cool applications for studs that are not structural. Um, there's places that make all kinds of threaded studs um, for, for using pretty much anywhere so you can mount stuff to walls. So, you know, in our locomotive world, we would have this We'd have some big electrical box we would hang on a wall, you know, with tabs on it to bolt. And in the old days, we would have um, the sheet behind it that it would mount to. We would have holes, you know, plasma to laser in that. We'd go behind it, put bolts in it, weld the head of the bolt, and then put the box on. Well, the new the new way we can do that is we just use our stud gun with the holes laid out, just pop four studs on there, throw the box on, and bolt it up. 
getting to be a super common use for studs, and it's, it's really cool. Um, the machinery is not cheap, but if you're doing a lot of work like that, it'll pay for itself pretty quickly. Um, read the book, go through the PowerPoint. Um, if you have questions, find me in the lab, find me online, I'll answer them best I can. Um, that's it, stud welding. Out.